that was fairly well it for me for the day. I, 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 I sort of, you know, like, look, I could continue on um, and I probably will continue on, you know, but I, I, I haven't seen anything outstanding since then um, going through and, and even like, OK, I know a couple of people mentioned that race at Randwick Race 5. Um, guys, you can't take the number five and the number nine, both of them each way, and still expect to make any money. Right, so you know you can sort of talk about dutching that race, but you can't dutch the five and the nine against the highest rated runner, which is the favourite. So you know, like you would have to have put a tick in the number ten as well and dutched that for seventy odd percent. But you can't. Number one, right? You don't back against a high rated runner, right? So don't back against a high rated runner like that. You know, unless you are extremely confident, and those indications to me aren't extremely. Uh, or, or aren't confidently backing against that favourite, they're backing as the next best chances in the race. So, you know, while I'm sort of saying on one hand, yes, I can see why, you would have, uh, A, you would have had to have taken both indications, the number five and the number nine. You would have had to, if you were going to dutch that race, there's not a hope in Hades that you would dutch that race taking the five or the nine when the number ten, the favourite, is the highest rated runner with great indications on it, right? So, you know, that for me was a knowing best race. Why? Because I don't feel confident taking one over the other. You know, the number five was only rated at 53 points. So anybody who's taken the five and nine over taking the, the ten and the nine, for instance, um, you know, you've backed against a high-rated runner, which is always going to be a danger. You know, there's only one thing that's more dangerous than an odds-on favourite, and in my view, I consider it to be more dangerous than an odds-on favourite. That's when a favourite's been backed into favouritism and it's the highest-rated runner. Right? It's the highest rated runner because it has had the most unusual fluctuation and most sudden movement in that market which has confirmed it or moved it into favouritism. Right? So to back against that, it's a, it's a big mistake. Okay, so lesson learned, I hope, and, uh, and let's not do it again. All right, now I did only have, I only had a couple of tips today for uh, other meetings. I, I've, I've, you know, like looking in my black book today and things like that, I'll just go and have a look. And uh, one of my black books, uh, black bookers that I had today was Rarachnabeel Race 5, Blevick Bay. And there you go, it won at 15.05. Um, and, uh, you know, whenever I sort of throw those in there, you know, you really should sort of pay some attention to those. I know that it was a favourite and things like that as well, so, you know, probably not something that everybody would be comfortable with doing. But now here's another good indication. I've obviously missed out on a couple of things here, but Win Mara, number seven at Eagle Farm, you know, that, geez, that's good. That's bloody awesome, that indication. And, you know, like sitting here chatting away and blah, blah, blah. And, missing out on opportunities. But yeah, and you can also see um, my black bookers in that race was Shuffle the Cash and Eddie Rapido. Eddie Rapido's come in second. Uh, Futures Dreams won it. Um, so yeah, look, a, a couple of okay results there. But the standout selection to make in that race based on indications was the number seven win Mara, okay, which I should have been on. And uh, I would still have a 100% strike rate today. <laughs> Uh, all right, so the next race there would have definitely have been the number four rarefied, but we're looking at a heavy long odds on race and certainly would not back against that odds on favourite without sort of feeling uh, that, you know. Um, now, my number one selection in that race was Wanted. You can see my black booker there. I've got a ratings points on it of nine and it came second, right? That's the power of black booking, folks. Once you know what you're looking for and what to do and things like that, you'll throw those things in there and they will not slip by you, right? Um, like it slipped by me already today. But in an odds on race, I, I probably wouldn't have done too much with it, to be honest with you. All right, now we're into Morfordville, and I am going to ask you all if you have any questions. I'm not going to drag the chain for too long today. I, you know, we, we, I think... Um, you know, down on numbers, and the guys that have turned up are the ones of you who are a little bit more experienced and things like that, so I doubt that there's too much that we need to really sort of go over today. I, I know that there's a couple of newbies in the in the chat today. I'll just welcome uh, Matthew for a start. Ma welcome on board, Matthew, and uh, I'm sure you're going to do rather well, mate. Um, and uh, just remember, Rome wasn't built in a day. Now, folks, do you have any questions that you would like to ask? Okay, Brian, I can see you stuck your little hand up there. I'll, uh, I'll take you first. How are you? Good, thanks, Kev. I had a good, a good day today. Yeah, and, yeah, that's uh, been a reasonably wanted, good day, that's for sure. Yeah, yeah, it was. I just wanted to thank you, and I've, I've, I want to go now, so I don't have any questions, <coughs> except it would be good to get a recording of this so we can analyse it more carefully 
Yeah, so it is recording. Every weekend's recording. I've just been too busy to get them loaded up to a server, mate, but I will do that next week. Okay. Good on you. Well, Thanks, cheers, Brian. Kid. Cheers. Okay, anybody else have anything they would like to add? I can see uh, David Ald. How are you going, David? Yeah, hi, Captain Heavy. Yes, I can, loud and clear. Thanks. Okay, mate, I managed to get on. I didn't think I had to first of all, but I went back and I got on okay. Could you just just try to explain once again, um, I noticed a couple of times today you've gone for the second favourite, and I've been staying off the second favourite for the simple reason that often it's the money from the first fade kind of just dribbles down to the second one. No, only Obviously. the odds on race. The, 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 the steadfast rule there is that if you see indications in a race where there's a firm favourite, right, that yep. the second indications will quite often be from the value hunters just bringing about good second indications on something because they're not going to take the short value on the favourite. So I'm talking about something that's very near to odds on. So. Okay, that, that, that kind of clarifies that a bit. Yeah, but I mean, no, like, they, uh, in, in terms of... It's like, a tricky one for me. Sorry? I mean, it, you know, at times I do have a bit of a problem just kind of distinguishing between the two, to be honest with you. So what you're saying is if, if all the money's pretty pretty sort of um, not too much in it on the top two or three runners... Now, well, do you have an example? Um, do you remember any race in particular that we looked at where... I think it was the one that you've just gone, gone by, actually. Okay, so just uh, one second. Okay, 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 look at number... F okay. I mean, it doesn't happen all the time, like, for example, number four... No, no, you wouldn't take that. That's an odds-on race, isn't it? It's a dollar forty for the yeah. favourite, so it's a knowing okay. best. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Yep, so they're the sorts of indications that you can't trust. You can't trust okay. anything in an odds in an odds on race, yeah, but I mean if we go back to other things where, you know, like there's been second favourites that have been taken, you will notice that there's no odds on favourite in those races. So right, when, okay. when something's paying a dollar forty, what will happen is, David, is that people will come in with a whole you know, heap of each way money saying, Well, why take a yeah. dollar forty on the favourite for the win when I can pick up a dollar eighty on the place on the second favourite? So there's no real you know, there's no method to their madness at all, mate, other than just value hunting, you know, like and value hunting is just, you know, going for a gamble. I mean, it's all like saying, Well, you know, this thing's paying good money, so that's my selection. I mean, that's not a selection criteria. Either it's gonna win or it's not gonna win. You know, so like I mean the clear cut the clear cut winner in that race um, and, you know, like even looking at this race, for instance, at Eagle Farm, like, you know, you could have gone either the second or the third favourite there, but you look at the favourite, definitely not a high-rated runner, definitely not a high percentage of the pool, definitely not a short price favourite. Um, so, you know, you can feel much more confident with those uh, indications in the top half of the screen. Um, but, you know, like, yeah, the, the rule there, which, you know, maybe got lost in translation over the uh, length of time you've been on board and things like that, but the rule of thumb is that, you know, like, when you do see a, quite a short price favourite, I mean, it might be coming down to $2, right? Um, yeah. And still there might be really good indications on a second favourite. Well, then what I want to see is that that second favourite is paying good overs for the place. And really that's about the only example that I've been able to see today, which is that one where there's a dollar forty favourite and the second favourite is rarefied. You would never, ever, ever back against, um, you know, like there's that race again for you. You know, like number four, clearly yeah. the highest rated runner, absolutely outstanding ratings and everything else, but that money is a value hunt. You know, that was the second favourite. Um, pretty much, well, you know, actually, even that Grand Harmony, that Grand Harmony actually was uh, was the uh, one of the opening favourites, and there was a lot of short price favourites early in that race, $1.90, $1.70, $3.10, $1.04. Um, so, you know, like, not a lot of confidence, right, outside of that favourite. See, that favourite's been $1.50 all the way through, $1.40, $1.50, $1.20, yeah, sure, sure, sure. all the way through, so no confidence anywhere else, but certainly the each way money looked like it was sort of okay, that they weren't too um, off the mark because they've shortened that thing in from $15 down to $8 and $2 for the place and got it in third, So, but still a massive risk. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you, sir. Good, good on you. Cheers, David. Okay, anybody else have anything there to ask? Here we go. How are you going, Keith? How's life in paradise? Oh, fantastic, buddy. Always good up here. Good, good, good. I was watching a fishing show yeah, yesterday. We were ca catching, uh, catching uh, what were they catching? Uh, barramundi up that way. I was watching on a fishing show yeah. last night. 
plenty around in between the crocodiles. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. Well, that's all I was thinking. I might have to get up there for a fishing trip one of these days. Some of those barrels.